right, hello everyone. My name is Kate Stepp. I am the Senior Director of Engineering for FactSet's Research Solutions Business Unit. And as an engineering director in the fintech space, I kind of find it as a difficult area to operate. The expectation is that I'm client-facing and business-minded, yet technical and engineering focus. So I find myself waking up in the morning, should I put on jeans and a t-shirt? Should I put on a suit and a blazer? Can I cover my laptop in stickers? Or should I keep it professional for client meetings? And I guess that's why I'm feeling pretty comfortable at this conference here. It's kind of the perfect intersection of finance and tech, suits and jeans, bankers and geeks. Um, and it's with this lens and audience that I'll be approaching the topic of application interop, exploring why it's good for both the developer and the end user, and talking a little bit about FactSet's approach to it. If you've not heard about FactSet before, um, we're a global uh, market data and financial technology provider. We've been around for about 40 years, and we support more than 120,000 users on our workstation solution and millions of end users of our digital solutions. Over our 40 years of history, we've confronted the challenges of a diverse product, technology, and content set ecosystem. We collect our own proprietary data, we integrate third-party data, we bring in exchange data, and we onboard partner content, and we stitch it all together seamlessly in one place. As an engineer myself, when I think back to my early development days, it included digging through a monolithic code base to hunt down a bug or add yet another feature to an already complex system. Does this sound familiar to anyone? Times have changed since then, and development has gone from this monolith to microservices. Why? Because we started to realize the power in small, simple, purpose-built services. They're easier to build, they're easier to understand, test, and fix. And they allow different independent development teams to take ownership of smaller pieces of the architecture. And they can develop in a fast, agile fashion without interfering with that overall system. This can all be abstracted away and hidden from the end user. Now, these concepts and principles are not limited to the services side. And in fact, to um, replicate them on the application side, what we want to do is create independent applications without the feel of independent applications. At FactSet, we've built hundreds of apps. And not shockingly, they're built on many different tech stacks, developed by completely different teams over a long period of time. And during that time, technologies and frameworks have increasingly uh, evolved at a rapid pace, especially if you're working with JavaScript frameworks. And by having more independence and modularity, we can update the tech stacks in a more progressive fashion without rewriting our entire system. So our facts at workstation containers shown here allows us to give clients the feeling of a single application um, entry point and developers the flexibility to build PC side applications right next to browser-based web apps. And we link these apps together and maintain flow by ticker blasting or sharing identifier context from one app to the next as the user navigates. So this got us going down that path of interopt and then OpenFin opened our minds to the multi-vendor interop. We know that each year our clients are challenged with becoming more efficient, all while consuming more data through more applications from more vendors. So we've committed to opening up not only our platform, but also our services that have helped in our own success. So it's not a new concept that multi-vendor interop requires standards, but it is a critical one. Thinking back to that microservices example, we can replace a monolith with modules only if we have strong contracts and interfaces tying them all together. So the FTC3 has done a great job with FTC3 context packages, creating this common way to share instruments between two applications. Developers now know exactly what to expect from other apps and can code to these specific formats. So if vendor X and vendor Y both utilize the FTC3 interface, the format of the context they share with one another will be the same, making it easier to communicate. The problem is, while the format of the messages is the same, the complexity of financial interop lies in the variety of the symbology. And the FTC3 context data is not a symbology solution. It's not specifically focused on modeling financial objects. If vendor X is passing Bloomberg codes and vendor Y is passing a ticker, there's no guarantee that those systems are going to be able to interpret those codes. 
FactSet's solution here is to not only utilize the FDC3 API within OpenFIN, but also provide a full symbology for every security we send to the API. Given FactSet's history and experience with content integration, we have advanced entity data models that ensure that we're able to provide the most complete symbology to our consumers. This means if you're using FactSet in your OpenFIN solution, you'll be able to choose the identifier that speaks to you, or more importantly, speaks to your systems. If you need that same data to power your solutions, we can also offer you our symbology data as an API or as part of our data management solutions. So with Symbology in a good place, we've started challenging our developers to consider the inputs and the outputs that our apps should support to enable custom workflows for our clients. We've always supported the standard outputs like download to Excel or save to PDF, but this shared message bus makes the importing and exporting so much more seamless. What we traditionally handled more behind the scenes will now become more open for others to tie into. This means developers need to think not only about the interactivity of clients within their app, but what are they doing before and after. So when a user selects a row of data in a report, we can combine the dates and values and export this in a chart-friendly format to the message bus so that it, be, it can be consumed in any charting application. When a user uses our interactive charting app, a share button could kick off a server-side chart image rendering service and pass that to the bus in an encoded image so that a note-taking or a messenger app could pick up on that. When a user selects text, we can enrich that text with additional info or source links that may be helpful if sending to a note-taking app. Now, by sharing enriched output to the bus, we're inviting our clients to integrate our content more closely to their own workflows. And by enabling input via the bus, we're inviting wider contribution from additional custom sources. You could envision this image including many more of your internal and third-party applications tailored exactly to your required flow of data. So let's take a look at an example for a research or a note-taking workflow utilizing the shared message bus. So if I'm reading a news article, and it happens to be the Wall Street Journal, and let's say it's about Google uh, being about to buy Fitbit. I may want to do some additional research within FactSet looking at both Google and Fitbit to get an idea more about this deal. So I'll open FactSet. I may also want to open up a note-taking application so that I can record my research as I go. In this demo, I'll open FactSet's internal research notes app. When I dock it to FactSet, in OpenFIN, the layout support gives me that nice docking functionality, but more importantly, I'm now utilizing the shared message bus that I referenced in the previous slide. So now, when I go back to my news article, if I select an excerpt and share that excerpt to the bus, my note-taking app can listen and also include the source link that it was provided from. If I jump over to FactSet and enter Fitbit into FactSet, it will share that identifier context with my note-taking app, and now you'll see that it's connected to that particular identifier. <clears throat> now, if I want to take the snapshot that you're seeing on the left and save that for later, I may want a PDF rendering of this shared to the cloud and then sent to the message bus so that it can be attached to the note-taking app. If I go to the filings application, a similar scenario to what we saw earlier with the news external app, we have support for um, sharing excerpts. So in this case, if we highlight something from a filing, I can sh share that to the message bus and again see it in the note-taking app with a source link back to the source. If I jump over to charting and I want to see how the price has been impacted by this deal, I may want to snap capture exactly that image. So if I share to the bus in this scenario, it's running in the, in the background to create an encoded image of that chart and passing it to the bus again so that my app can um, include that image. So now when I publish this note, I've just included four different um, excerpts from all different applications in all different formats. And then I've, in this scenario, sent it back to FactSet's internal research notes app connected to the Fitbit ticker so that when I come back to access it later, um, it's right where I need it. 
So this was just a really quick example of how a research or note-taking workflow might be facilitated in the OpenFIN message bus. Um, in this example, we enabled export options like text snippets, cloud document attachments, and encoded images to be shared to the message bus so that any other app could consume them. In the demo, I used fax at apps, but any other apps could consume them on the bus. We also opened up our note-taking app to accept those input types as well. So we hope this starts to get some ideas and juices flowing uh, about your own workflows and how your apps and systems might tie in. And if it did spark any ideas for you, we have some good news that FactSet in OpenFIN is available for public download now on our website. And um, if you use it there, if you're an existing FactSet client, there's no additional cost to utilize it. We're using FDC3 API. We're broadcasting full symbology to the message bus for your apps to consume. We leverage layouts and channels so that you can customize your workflows. So please check it out, play around, and if you have any questions, um, we're at the booth right in the back. Thank you.